Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about my electrical system and how I wired my Blue C fuse block. So I had this system in my truck for a while now and a lot of you have been asking questions about it. So I decided I might as well show you guys a quick walkthrough on how I did it. Unfortunately, I already did everything so I can't really do a how-to video, but I can at least show you guys some of the things that I went through and all the supplies that I had. Now prior to putting in the Blue Sea system, I was actually using the factory battery terminal posts and everything was fine until I had too many accessories. You can see in this picture here on how many threads I had left on that post. And so I decided I was gonna upgrade the electrical system and put my own fuse block in and also put a circuit breaker in. It was only gonna cost me maybe $100 or maybe a little bit more than that. And so I decided, you know, in case I wanna add more things like I did with my refrigerator, it would make things a lot easier to do with the fuse block. So let's go ahead and get into the video. All right guys, as you can see here, I'm running a Group 27F battery. This is the larger battery that goes in the 01, 02 Forerunners, I believe. I think the standard size is a 24, so you can upgrade to a group 27, fits no problem. Uh, you can see here on the terminals, I have military style terminal posts. Uh, it took a little bit of finagling to get it to work, and actually it was kind of a nightmare, but I got it to work somehow. And the main reason why it's a pain is because of the OEM terminal here. It actually bends quite a bit and it barely fits on here, and that's why it's kind of you know offset a little bit. It's the only way I can make it fit and still have the uh, OEM wiring harness still on that bracket down there holding it in. You can see I've got a lot of different wires going out of here. I have my winch in here. I have the uh, big three wiring upgrade. And then I have my individual circuit that goes to this fuse block. These are all four gauge wires. And then on the negative side, I have the same thing going on here. I have the winch cable that's on here and then the big three and then the separate ground for the fuse block. And then over here, I have a 100 amp breaker, which is sufficient for this wiring that I have here and also sufficient for everything I'm running. I've already measured everything coming out of here. I think I have about 70 to 80 amps coming out of here when everything is on and I don't run everything. And then it's hooked up to this 12 circuit Blue C fuse block. It's got its own grounds as well. I'll show you a little bit closer in a second here. And then along the fender here, you probably can't see that on the camera very well, but I have my relays for all the individual circuits that require a relay. So things like my light bar, my rear light bar, my bumper light bar, and a couple other things that I can't remember right now. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, here's a slightly closer look at the relays. And you can see here I've got four relays. I think this one is for the dual light bar that I have in the back. Um, I can't remember what all of these are. It must be for the LEDs, the light bars and stuff. So you can see here how I attach these is I took these relays, I drilled out the holes a little bit larger. The holes are actually really small. And then I found some 10 millimeter um, bolts, just spare ones that you can find at the junkyard or just, you know, take a couple off your car that you're not using anymore. Like there's one over there that's not being used. And what I did was I put some riveting nut certs in here. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but it's basically you drill out a hole, you put the tool in there, and then you expand it and it makes basically a nut for you on the back. This sheet metal is really thin, so you know you can only fit so much on here. And it's nice that it actually still fits with the battery in place. So there's a little hole here normally. And then what I did was I ran all the wires behind this fender which made it a little bit more clean and then they ran up to here and so the grounds and the uh, 12 volt source goes into the relay and then the wire for the switch goes all the way through the firewall back there into where I need to use the switch and so everything is kind of pretty much here and the only wire that goes through there is the switch wire at least that's what I remember so I'll show you guys the tool for this in a second here and that way you guys can kind of get an idea but I basically lined everything up just marked the little holes and then this one as well. This one's re this one was a recent addition. That's why it's you know out here a little bit more. But you can see you can fit quite a bit of relays in here. Probably like six in here, maybe seven if you really wanted to. And then what you can do is just run all the wires through the back and just trim them down, and then in and run it right to the fuse block. So let me go ahead and open the fuse block so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. And I'll show you also how I mounted it in a second. So all you have to do is run all your grounds. So you can see here I got maybe four or five grounds that are all coming into here. There's some on the back as well, you can't see it. And then all the positive terminals. Um, the nice thing is this fuse block 
comes with some labeling stuff and you can actually label things. So you can see I got my HIDs running through here, rear LED, bumper LED, roof LED maybe, and I don't know what I wrote here, but <laughs> it must control something. And then CB radio, I have it directly wired. So if you don't need a relay um, to run your components, like let's say you have a CB radio or the fridge that I have in the back, you could just run it directly to the fuse block and then just fuse it um, as long as it's you know within a certain amperage. And so you can see here inside of the Blue Sea, it actually takes a couple of uh, spare fuses that you can put in here. So most of my uh, fuses are you know 15 amps and a lot of these run in less than 15 amps, but you normally go a little bit bigger. And then these, the rear LED and the bumper LED it looks like, um, they use 25 amps. And you can see I use all the empty slots as well for extra fuses, just in case. You never know when things can go wrong. I've never blown a fuse on this, so, you know, fortunately for me, I never had to use that. Um, but then you can see here, the negative post just goes to the factory uh, negative post for the battery. And you can see I upgraded the wire uh, using the big three. And then <clears throat> on this side here, the wire, you can't really see it, but this wire just curves down and then back up to the circuit breaker. And then on the other side here, uh, you just connect the positive to the battery. And so here you can shut off everything if you wanted to by just pushing this button so there's no power here anymore and you can work on it if you want. And then you can just snap it back in for power. All right, here's a side shot view so you can kind of see here. So this is that wire I was telling you about. It just goes out, curves down, and back up. And you can see I bent the terminals. And I'll show you what I used to make all of these terminals. They're just four gauge, um, you know, lugs. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but I'll put it in the description for you guys. And then all of these just use um, spade terminals. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, you can see in my other videos, I use them a lot. You just buy a kit and they last pretty much forever. And then, you can see here, here's the negative. It just wraps around to here. And you can see all the positive wires just go in between here. And you know, there's a nice you know gap in here. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on in there, but I just zip tied it off. And you can see it just all goes back here behind this uh, fender. And then it goes back to these wires. And here's the, uh, this is the fridge wire. You can see it's a 10 gauge. This is the CB radio, it's pretty thin. And then this here is the negative for the uh, CB radio. I decided just to wire that directly to the battery. And so you can see it's not that difficult. And uh, it's recommended you have a circuit breaker in the event that everything here fails, you can just shut it off. Now one thing I do regret is um, my HIDs is actually ran on this circuit as well. And so if I accidentally shut this off to kill everything, then I have no headlights. So that's one thing you might want to keep in mind if you're wiring something like this. I've never had an issue, so it's not that big of a deal, but you know, a lot of these are off-road accessories, so they're not really necessary. You know, let's say you needed to get home and something was killing your battery. You can just pop this circuit breaker here and you would have no power to this entire block. And then down here, you can see these are where all the wires for the switches go into. It's inside that grommet. I know there's a ton of wires in there, but I don't think I'll be able to fit any more wires in there. If you're wondering how I mounted the circuit breaker and the Blue Sea fuse block, I just put it on top of the factory fuse location here. So you can see here, this is just the factory fuse box. And I just put some Velcro under here on both sides. And you can see it still comes out pretty easily if I really wanted to. Um, but that's all holding in place. And then you can see here, I put everything on this plastic ABS piece of uh, material that I bought, and I'll leave a link for you guys, but I just cut a little rectangle out, and I was gonna get a little bit more elaborate and actually make another leg that goes down this way, but I decided not to, because I didn't need to. And you can see it stays in place pretty well. I've had this system in here for a couple years now, and it hasn't really given me any problems. And then all you need to do is, uh, when you get this cut out, you just put this circuit breaker over it, and just put in a couple holes, or just mark a couple holes, and then just drill through the holes and put in the mounting hardware. All right guys, I wanted to show you guys what I used to build all of that system over there. You just need some four gauge wire. You can see I've got a whole bunch of it right here. This is all the extra that I had. You can choose to buy a kit for like a big three upgrade, or you know, you just do what I did and just buy like, I don't know, I think 20 feet of this. Didn't really need much. Um, if you're OCD like me, you probably want to buy the black one as well for the ground, but you can easily use this and just tape it black if you wanted to. 
Um, but all you need is this, and then you need some of these lugs. And so this one specifically is a 5 16 inch um, hole, and it fits the 4 gauge wire. And you gotta make sure that the hole actually fits the terminal. So I had to buy a couple extra ones. So here you can see I got one that was too small. But even if you get one that's too small, you can always drill it out. Copper is pretty easy to drill through. Uh, you can just take a step bit and just drill it out as much as you need and it'll be the exact same thing. And then all you need to do is strip back a little bit of wire with a knife. Helps to have a sharp blade to get through all the way. You don't have to be perfect, but it helps. Alright, so I think I got a little bit too much here, but that's okay because you want it to go in here. And there's two ways to do this. You could crimp it or you can use solder. And I like to use solder. Oh, okay, perfect amount. So, this is where the vise comes in handy. And it's kind of offset right now, but it's okay. Just want to clamp it in there and then grab yourself some solder if you have any. Believe it or not, this solder is probably over 20 years old. I bought it at Radio Shack a long time ago. Um, and then what you want to do is kind of fill this thing with solder and then jam this wire in here and then let it cool down and then you'll have yourself a nice uh, four gauge you know, terminated wire. So you'll need one of these torches just a simple torch and you just gotta heat it up and this is why the vise is important and just stick the solder in there and I don't really think you can use too much I mean just get enough in there that you know you're gonna have a good connection See some of the old solder came out anyways. And just let it cool down and you got one side done. And just do the same for the other side. And then another thing you can use the vise for, and you can see in some of my connections, this terminal is no longer straight. So I can't touch that one. But like some of them I actually have it, this piece bent all the way down. So that way it sits downward. Um, so you can do that in the vise as well, you just take a hammer and just hammer it. And then another thing you can do is you can put heat shrink wrap around this. So that way you have a nice, you know, waterproof. Um, but I don't think that's necessary. I, I obviously did that, I believe. I don't remember, but I remember taping it as well. So that's how you do that. All right. And then the next thing you're going to need is this uh, little spade terminal that I mentioned earlier. So I used all of mine already. This is actually my last one. This is for 16 to 22 gauge wire. You can see my fuse block has plenty of these. But you just buy one of these kits on Amazon. I'll leave a link for you guys. It's from WireFi. And you can see I use most of the smaller ones already. I actually don't have any more. But these are heat shrinkable as well. So once you crimp the wire in here, you just heat it up. Probably with a heat gun, not with a torch. And then this will give you a nice connection and then you can bend these as well you can see here they bend pretty easily to get yourself a nice clean look alright guys so this here is the rivnut tool this is how I connected all of those relays to the uh, fender and so what you need to do is like I said drill a hole through the fender and make sure the back side is actually open and there's nothing blocking it and the kit comes with all these different sizes so you can do a common quarter 20 rivnut uh, I don't think I use that one because it's a Japanese vehicle. But once you get that hole, you put this through. So what ends up happening is once you put this through the hole, uh, you see how there's like a bunch of little lines right here. So when it when you use this tool, it will actually squeeze all of this because this is the weakened part um, against the back of the fender, and so 
that's what gives you this nut in the back. And so this is if you can't get a nut back there easily or you, you, know, you can't weld a nut back there, you can use one of these rib nuts. And so I ended up using the, let's see, I don't remember, M5, I wanna say. Let me just take a look. So I've got a whole new kit over here that I bought because I ran out of the ones that it came with. But I used one of these, maybe M6. It's either M5 or M6, I can't remember. Um, but that one matches the factory 10 millimeter bolts for the uh, Forerunner. And that'll allow you to use the 10 millimeter um, bolts that you found at the junkyard. And that'll kind of make it kind of factory, I guess. So you can do that. And that's how you get your relays in there cleanly without having to do a whole bunch of you know, work because there's really no good place to put those relays um, unless you just stick them in the fender, I guess. You can do that too, but uh, mine are all right there. And so you can see here, this is how the tool works. Um, it comes with various different sizes. Basically put this in here and then um, I think this is like six. you thread this into there like that, so just imagine this is over here. And then once you squeeze this, that's what, that's what crushes this part right here. And then this gets stuck in there. And then you get your nut. And that's it. And you can get this tool at Harbor Freight. They have one, you can get it on Amazon. This is where I got mine. This is the Astro 1442. It comes with a bunch of stuff already. It's always confusing how to use a tool every time I use it but it's not that complicated. And then I bought a bunch of these on Amazon. All right guys, there you have it. That is my entire electrical system. I didn't show you guys the switches, but you can just imagine the wires going directly into the switches from the firewall. Everything is pretty much housed in the battery compartment there. I'll leave links for all the products I use in the description so you guys can find it. And if you guys have any questions about my electrical system, leave them down in the comments below. If you guys like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a nice day and stay safe out there.